Today we're going to be making fine art for our dungeon. How are you today? Art Jeremiah here. If you want weekly inspiration and haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It would be much appreciated. Anyway, if you've read through the 5th edition Dungeon Master's Guide, you will see art objects listed under treasure. It reads, Art objects, idols cast of solid gold, necklaces studded with precious stones, paintings of ancient kings, bejeweled dishes. Art objects include all these and more. And being an artist, I really like the idea of this treasure. Not to mention, it really does add refreshing flavor to a dungeon. So today, we're going to be painting portraits of some ancient priests. I first measured out and cut rectangular shapes out of cardstock. The exact measurements I used were 1 inch tall and 20 millimeters wide. This part was pretty straightforward, so not really much explanation here. Then, without measuring or anything, I cut strips and strips of card. The idea is to cut strips wide enough for our picture frames. I then cut those strips down to size, and again, I don't get too bogged down with the measuring. I just use my hobby knife to compare the rectangular piece while cutting. Take note on how I'm organizing each piece. That way, I will know how many I need without really keeping account. I know this isn't counting high or anything, but for some reason, my creative process is slowed down by storing numbers in my mind. Next, using my small scissors, I cut a rough 45 degree angle on all the strips I just cut out. I'm definitely not exact when doing this. You may see some other pieces laying there on the mat. Those are the sconces I made in the last Building a Dungeon episode. If you didn't catch that, I will have a link in the description that you can click on and watch after this video. Next, I glue the frames in place with PVA glue. I use my hobby knife to help line things up. That helped a lot considering my fingers are almost the width of the paintings. I then decided I wanted the paintings to be a little thicker, so I glued an extra card to the back. I found it easiest to stick the picture on the card and then cut it out to match. I then used my hobby knife to scratch up the frames. My hope here was to add some wood grain, which didn't really show up much in the end. So if you do want a wood grain, I would suggest either using thin strips of styrofoam or maybe some green stuff. I then mix up a little gesso-like mixture. That consists of PVA glue, plaster, water, and black paint. Gesso is traditionally rabbit skin glue and marble powder, but my mixture is close enough. This gesso will stick to virtually anything and really does a great job at preparing surfaces for painting. I will have Amazon links in the description of some of the supplies I used in this build if you want to help support the channel. I then do a thick coat of black gesso on my pieces. I found it just a little bit tricky to hold our paintings and coat them in this mixture, so I ended up laying them down on parchment paper, holding them down with my hobby knife, and then painting them. After those pieces dry, they are super hard. And even just running my finger along the surface, I can tell by the texture that it will pick up strokes of paint nicely. I figured this titanium buff color by Golden would be the perfect foundation for our paintings. One thing I love about these Golden paints is that they have a swatch on the label that shows the true color and the opaqueness of the paint. This buff color is mostly opaque, but I really like how it's just slightly translucent. It makes the brush strokes show up nicely, and that will help give us the feel that these are paintings. When doing this foundation step, I'm working just like I would with a large size painting. I really love having a bunch of crisscross brush strokes for the layers that are to come. They will add a lot of character to the painting, as well as give us more grip for us to work in details later. For this next part, I really don't expect everyone to be able to do this, so stay tuned until the end of the video to see a quick and easy alternative to painting your own portraits. Okay. I decided I wanted a more classic feel to the color scheme of these paintings. Kind of like a faded painting from the late Middle Ages and early Renaissance. When blue was a luxury, and over the years the vibrant reds had faded to browns. So I chose a very earthly palette of Vallejo paints. All of greens, browns, and flesh tones mainly. I figured that limited palette would help me achieve the look I was going for. 
and I started things off by adding a gradient background of olive green. I've really enjoyed painting gradients in the last few years. I don't really know how to explain what I mean by that, but I'm always on the lookout for being able to add gradients to my art, whether that's in a painting, on miniatures, or while crafting terrain. And in the same fashion I would with my large size paintings, I do a rough sketch with a brush and thin down reddish brown paint. Normally I'd use a burnt sienna, but the mahogany brown was well suited for this part. If you happen to be getting some value out of this channel, consider joining us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month, and you will gain access to extra footage of videos like this one, and other videos that I've done in the past. I want to give a big shout out to Richard Sorden, my latest patron, who recently joined the League of Alchemists. Thanks so much for your support. With patrons like you, I'm able to keep this channel going and produce regular videos. And next, I start building on my paintings with some Vallejo Dark Flesh. This is an orangish peach color that will add a lot of warmth to the paintings. I'm mostly just going to be using this color as a base tone for the faces of our portraits. Next, I squirt a little paint juice on my palette. This is a pretty common ritual of mine. I don't know why, but I always seem to forget to shake my paints. So, after cleaning up that mess, I shake it up and add a drop of ivory white to my palette. This is going to be the brightest color on my paintings, and I use it to add highlights to various parts of the faces. I try to pay attention to where I believe the light will hit, and I add dabs of this highlight to the cheeks, nose, forehead, and a little bit on the chin and ears. This gives me a fine base portrait to start with. Now I can start adding character to each of the portraits. The first one, I give a balding head and a big gray beard, making him look almost wizardly. I also darken up the background and add some extra highlights to the portrait so it pops a little. I was thinking this guy was some kooky old priest or something. The second portrait was looking kind of elfish, so I gave them pointy ears and a bald head, because bald elves look cool. And, as with the previous portrait, I darken the background and add a little bit of extra highlighting. And this guy was looking a bit neckbeardy, so I gave him a neckbeard and large ears. Honestly, he looks more of a villain than the rest. And again, I darken the background and add a little bit of highlights to make the portrait pop. With the last portrait, I feminized the face and gave her some long hair. Perhaps many ages ago, she was some sort of priestess in this temple. And, again, I make it pop by adding dark background and highlighting her face more. And now I paint the frames with a solid coat of mahogany brown. While I'm painting this base coat, let's do a couple comment shoutouts. The first is from Zelda Doll, who said, Very nice detail for the dungeon. Also, I like to cut things using cuticle scissors because they're smaller than nail scissors. That's really some great advice and I'm definitely going to be taking it. Thanks for sharing. I'm always open to more advice. The next comment is from Steve Smith, who said, Wow, another great video, sir. I can't wait for the next video. Thanks Steve, I really appreciate that. I'm for the most part doing weekly videos now, so no need to wait too long anymore. And when the paint dries, I do a light dry brush of ivory. This helps bring out the details like the wood grain and the edges of the frames. Because the ivory paint gave a bit of a chalky look, I watered down some burnt umber ink and added a wash just over the frames of the paintings. I also wanted to add a few more details to the wood, so I painted some hits of wood grain with a mixture of dark flesh and mahogany brown. In order to make the portraits pop a little bit more, I add a dark line around the edge of the frame that meets up with the portrait. I'm just using my burnt umber ink to accomplish this. And on the edge of that dark line, I decided to add some gold, just to add some fancy detail to the frames. I had a hard time getting the gold line as thin as I wanted, so I just cleaned it up a little bit with my brown ink after, both on the inside and the outside of the gold line. I was really enjoying the contrast that the burnt umber ink was giving the frames, so I then decided to go back and add it into the portraits themselves, giving them a little more contrast as well. And there's our portraits. And also I totally do understand that there are some of you watching this channel who either don't want to take the time to paint little portraits like this, or who are intimidated by a project like this. And if that is you, all you really have to do is download a painting of choice, shrink it down, and glue it to a card. 
All I have with me right now is my label printer. So this particular portrait is just black and white and doesn't need to be glued down. Regardless, it's the same concept and I'm not gonna finish up this piece or anything. I just wanted to demonstrate how I would do it. Anyway, I've shrunk down and cropped a bunch of my older art onto one printable page for this purpose. I will have a link to that file in the description. This is a free download for you to use. Feel free to use this for your personal collection of dungeon paintings. Here's a quick look at some of my art. And some of these are going to be included on the download, so you really won't want to miss out. And now we can glue our portraits in place with some PVA glue. I decided to leave Mr. Neckbeard here a little bit crooked, like the portrait had been knocked off center by someone passing through the hall. And this is the same hall we placed our lanterns in in the last video. If you haven't seen that yet, then you'll be able to watch it through a link that's popping up on the screen right now. <laughs> 